Um, I want to move on now to something that has come into us via the public, one of the issues they want to talk about, which is CCTV, which of course is a really interesting one. It's something I'm asked about an awful lot, whether I'm with councillors or residents, um, but also businesses, shopkeepers. Um, it's something that, that comes up time and time again. And, you know, I think CCTV is something that's, that's really changed from being this big brother thing that was sort of out there to something that actually a lot of us now have um, on our on the front of our own homes, whether it's with ring doorbells and others. And I know that the police can often make really great use, actually, um, of that as well. So I know there was a the force had developed a five year strategy um, that ran to 2022. And of course, now that we're in 2022, this strategy is coming to an end. So I wonder if you could explain uh, what the force's strategy is going forward around CCTV and what the position is um, and how we best support the districts and boroughs in, in their community safety efforts as well. Yeah, thanks, Commissioner. And I, and I think uh, this is an area where um, uh, your office and the force can work very closely together on um, for the for the future safety of the county. So, um, I guess if I give a bit of historical context, lots of the investment in um, uh, town centre closed circuit television uh, came in the late nineties and two thousands, um, particularly following the Crime and Disorder Act, uh, and there were some uh, significant funds made available nationally that um, local boroughs and districts could bid against to get those systems in place. Uh, uh, some uh, established really um, uh, quite sophisticated, uh, well invested, extensive systems, and we we see those, for example, in uh, in Runnymede and in Guildford and in Walking and other boroughs and districts um, uh, in invested less. And of course, uh, in doing so, they would consider, for example, what their crime levels were in their area, how much disorder, and so on. And we, of course, we've got to set this in the context of Surrey being the fourth safest county in England and Wales, and um, you know, uh, it, it often um, uh, local organisations, local political leaders will want to invest their, their money elsewhere. So there's not a universally um, uh, um, distribution of CCTV across the county. There's not a common sort of network of how it operates uh, because of that sort of differential investment going back 20 years or so. Um, over time, uh, those that were established well have uh, seen refresh and reinvestment. And also, as that's happened, uh, the regulations surrounding CCTV in terms of um, uh, human rights and scrutiny and uh, professional monitoring and so on have all tightened up uh, uh, during those uh, couple of decades. Uh, at the same time, as you outlined in your introduction, Commissioner, we've also seen um, new technologies emerging. So in policing terms, uh, a lot of our uh, forensic work that we do on um, uh, video now comes from a whole range of different sources. So uh, we have an we have a, an online um, platform um, uh, that's provided across Surrey, Sussex, Hampshire and Thames Valley uh, that's effectively a digital evidence store for all of that material. So uh, that can be um, footage from uh, officers' body worn videos from uh, mobile phone uh, footage that people uh, use from household security cameras and doorbell cameras. Uh, from bus videos and helmet cams on cyclists. So the the range of material that we're getting uh, is absolutely exploding in volume, which gives us another uh, challenge in terms of the storage and cost of storage. But the investigative opportunity that comes from that uh, is now much greater than we see from CCTV. So that poses the question about the strategy, then what is CCTV for? Town centre CCTV um, can be really valuable in managing events and nighttime economy and patrol and deployments. Uh, and I think that's uh, probably why over those couple of decades you've seen it become well established in places like Walking and Guildford because it helps with that town centre management, uh, the, the nighttime economy uh, with events and so on in, in, the, in those areas and, and, and hence the investment has kept up. But it's not been the case in other areas. In that five year strategy, we had a plan for policing to uh, support any local schemes through a, a funding decided on formula, uh, but for us not to um, uh, to own, the own and run the staff associated with that. Uh, that transition hasn't been uh, uh, fully, fully achieved. In fact, just in recent weeks, I was in discussion with chief execs about uh, we think now is the appropriate moment as we're coming into the final year of this strategy to have another uh, thorough refresh. 
um, and uh, decide what it what it is that we want for a county, how how we best um, uh, keep keep our residents safe. Um, I should say that in those areas where um, uh, local boroughs and districts have taken a decision to um, uh, re remove some of the capability, that's been done in very close consultation with us. Uh, and in the sort of hotspot areas, they have so. Uh, so if I get would well, give an example of Rygate and Banstead, they're retaining key cameras in hotspot areas around uh, public parks uh, where they see a need for it, and in car parks. That actually links with what the uh, the evidence base says. So there was a an international study done by our College of Policing about the effectiveness of CCTV uh, that did show that in places like car parks, it can have a preventative effect. Uh, for those that are planning to go out and do event offences, uh, it's less successful on spontaneous offences, uh, acts of violence, for example. And of course, we see that routinely in police in the nighttime economy. Uh, the CCTV operators, you know, are, on a busy night out, will see fights routinely break out. People are not worried that they're on CCTV because they're uh, they've lost their inhibitions and they're drunk and so on. Uh, but it does help, of course, with that um, directing resources to that initial response. So. Um, uh, quite a lot involved in that, but uh, I think the summation of that is that we'd really uh, welcome collaborating with you and your office and the um, uh, the Burren districts um, across the county to um, get us a strategy that's now fit through to uh, beyond 2022 through to 2025, 2028 and beyond. Thank you very much. And yeah, as you say, technology has moved on enormously. Um, so it's absolutely a good, a good time to be looking at refreshing and working closely with all of the districts and boroughs. Specifically looking at East Surrey, now that we know that Rygate Police Station is obviously going to stay um, with the announcement on the Building the Future plan and, and the plans to remain at Mount Brown. Um, it, what is going to happen to CC to provision for the East? Will it still be catered for out of the police station or is that going to be looked at being done separately? Uh, we're o open to discussion on that. Um, and I know that um, uh, there was a very detailed report went before Rygate and Banstead Borough Council with the council's own analysis and some analysis from us that um, uh, resulted in the numbers of cameras that they wanted wanted to keep. Um, but in terms of any new strategy, um, then uh, I think we absolutely keep an, keep an open mind on that. So, for example, um, one of the things that I was talking to uh, chief executive colleagues was about was the sort of next generation camera capability, uh, not without controversy, because next generation cameras are often not high up on a pole. They're uh, sighted at different levels in order to be able to do things like facial recognition. Uh, we know facial recognition, um, there are still some uh, legal arguments around it broadly falls into two camps, uh, retrospective facial recognition and proactive. No issue really on retrospective facial recognition because that's what we do now in screening video footage. So I think any member of the public watching this, if they knew that the police had a thousand hours of CCTV to go through to try and identify offender, you would probably want us to use that technology to reduce that thousand hours to 10 hours, for example, uh, to you know uh, pick out potential suspects and do matching with databases and so on, if it's after the offence. Uh, the more controversial area is proactive use of facial um, uh, recognition, where effectively you would have a, um, uh, a list uh, of subjects uh, that you were trying to seek out. Now, again, there's degrees of acceptability in here. I think if we if we said to people we're proactively looking for somebody who we think is about to per perpetrate a serious act of violence or a terrorist attack, most people would say, yes, <laughs> please do go ahead and do that. Um, but if it was to, I don't know, um, uh, proactively look for domestic violence offenders that were uh, breached their bail or were out, you know, outstanding on arrest, how would people feel about that? Um, so an interesting area for future years to come, but that sort of technology requires much higher quality cameras and for them to be sighted differently than the current CCTV infrastructure but clearly a debate that we've got to be we've got to be central to and uh, understand from our communities what their appetite is for that sort of technology too. Great thank you very much and yeah clearly there's a, there's a much wider debate um, to be had both within and outside of policing around what, what the public are comfortable with. Um, moving over to the to the west of the county um, for a moment um, I was wondering when well, I speak a lot to we speak well, we all speak a lot to Guildford residents and particularly Guildford businesses and those in the town centre and also the our nighttime economy across Guildford and I was wondering um, stakeholders have been a bit concerned about the lack of support they've had during peak times and it's something I've heard about recently I wonder what the police force can do in order to support that. 
Well, uh, very willing to listen to those concerns, Commissioner, look at the um, the detail of what's happened. Uh, as I say, in places like Guildford and, and Woking, where we've got those, those um, sort of build-up areas, that different uh, field of the economy, then we would absolutely want that system to function well. And we're, we're committed to funding our part of it on a, fo on, a formula, on a formula basis. But clearly, if we're refreshing the strategy, that's one thing that we will want to look at again jointly. That's great. Thank you. Um, and finally, on CCTV, our designing out crime officers who do a fantastic job. I know right across the county and I've had the pleasure um, of meeting a few of them. They do really great work. What role can they play here in terms of working with the districts and boroughs um, to support residents and businesses? Well, um, the designing out crime officers is uh, one of the things that I would attribute to those uh, lower levels of crime across the county that we've been talking about this morning. We've got uh, a really active network of colleagues that are uh, well regarded in their field. Um, I, I was talking to um, one of them that would told me about a, a housing development that they'd um, been involved in right from the start um, over in Mole Valley, uh, that in all of the years it had been constructed, it had never seen a successful burglary um because the environment had de been designed from the start some attempts but not successful burglaries um so really important to be involved in that uh, scheme development early on so uh if there are any um uh businesses watching this or uh local authority um colleagues and councillors watching this then please do think about design our crime officers they will be working very closely with your planning departments anyway but uh, get us involved right from the off because um uh, they can int introduce some uh, principles that really help the future security of developments and uh, I've been out and uh, presented a few of the uh, final certificates when the developments come to fruition and uh, uh, I know the developers are really proud of it um, uh, the local residents that live there really not notice the difference and of course the teams uh, get a big big reward from seeing their work come to fruition um, those design out crime officers though can uh, offer a service after the event as well so they're they're free uh, to residents and businesses to use so uh, you can just get in touch with your local borough or district team look them up on twitter or facebook page or search our website each of those borough and districts have got access to design out crime officer who can come and do you a security survey they can give they can uh, give you uh, really great advice they um uh, of course, we don't recommend uh, companies and products and installers, but we can give you the guidance on which ones were approved to the to the right standards, so you know that you're going to get a going to get a good product if you're going to invest money uh, in security. So that's a free free service available to all all residents and businesses, and would re really encourage people to use it if they if they didn't know about that. Thank you very much, Chief Constable. Yeah, the Design Out Crime Officers really are a fantastic resource within policing. Um, I'm going to move on to now something that I know is top of everybody's mind.